Hey everyone, Matt here from Herbal House and in this video we're taking a look at the latest master controller. So these master controllers have become more compatible with more lights, which is just what everyone wants to hear. And there are a few nice little features such as Wi-Fi app integration. So for a lot of people you can connect this to your Wi-Fi, connect it to an app and control it through there. But in this video we are going to go through manually setting it on the display. So this does have a touch screen display here and some buttons, but again we'll cover that very shortly. Now why would you want a master controller? For a lot of people it means that you can automate your grow lights without the use of a timer because this is what's controlling the lights and it will allow you to link multiple lights to two separate groups so you could have a veg and a flower group for instance and it does have temperature sensors for over temperature regulation so let's say your grow space gets too hot it will start pulling the temperature or sorry pulling the intensity out of your lights to try and regulate the temperature so a nice little safety that is built in there but that's nothing new of course they do also have a set of relay outputs, so you could integrate this with something a little more commercial because that's what these were designed off, commercial grade equipment. So for domestic users, it's got more bells and whistles than you're gonna need, but that's fine. So let's just quickly cover what we've got included in the box. We've taken the liberty of pulling this all out for you guys. So what we've got here is the power supply. So it's a USB cable and adapter, which is gonna go in and power this up. We've got the two temperature slash humidity sensors right here. We've got two communications cables. So the comms cables here go from the controller to the light. We also have a mounting bracket for those who want to mount this to the wall. And of course, some basic instructions to get you up and running. Now, I did mention this was uh, primarily for LEDs, but for a lot of people, this does actually work with certain HPS fixtures, at least in the commercial realm. So moving on from this, let's actually get this thing connected and show you guys what we're working with. Okay, so first things first, let's get the controller powered up. So I'll just wind out the power cable here. Just plug that in right there. This goes into the USB supply. Now you probably could get away with just about any phone charger to be fair, it all, it all works the same. Got my power point here, like so. So that's powered up the controller. Of course we do need to peel away the protective film. If I was able to do that with no fingernails, that'd be great. There we go. Oh, very nice and satisfying. So what I'm gonna do now that it's powered up is I'm going to connect one of the comms cables to the LED that we have here on the table, if you didn't notice it. It's a Four Seasons Quantum Par 100. So I'm just gonna take one of the ends of the cable here and plug that into zone A lamp. And I'm gonna run the cable out here and just plug that into the input of the grow light. Now for this particular grow light, you do need to wind the dimmer around to EXT for external control and as you can see it has turned off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to set up a camera so you guys can see how we're going to set up this display. Okay so this is the screen you are going to see when you first power up your controller. Now I'll just quickly flash down here we've got the power supply on this, we've got the temperature humidity sensor and the connection to our uh, demo LED here. So we're just focused on zone A and you of course have zone B for a second group of controls. Now we're not stressed about the relay inputs here, we're just gonna focus on the control of a single LED. So when you've connected the LED, you are gonna see on the display here, we have the rated wattage for the LED, which is changeable, so this is incorrect in this case, it's only 100 watt LED. The cycle of the light currently, it's set to off. The percentage for the wattage of the LED, so as you lower the percentage output to the LED, the wattage will drop correspondingly. Again, these values are incorrect, so we're not going to stress about that just yet. We have the current temperature and humidity of our sensors, so 19 degrees and 71% RH in this room. The on and the off schedule, over temperature protection, and the same for humidity. So over temperature protect protection at 50 degrees is probably a little high, I, I might consider lowering that to around 40 degrees and the humidity we're not going to stress about for our growers applications. Now, most important thing to do first is set the time down here. So, of course, units in centigrade, and this is actually a touch screen, so you can just go down here and touch the gear icon for more settings. We'll run through those shortly. So, going back here, we want to set these parameters. Now, it's actually not the kind of touch screen you'd expect like this. You've got to come over here and you're going to hold the set key and now it's just gotten a red block around the wattage there. So what we can do, we're actually just gonna skip all of that and set the, temp, you'd set the time. So if we go down to here, go through all of the settings, this is how you are going to set the time. So, yep, so that's just cycle to on. And as you can see, it is getting brighter. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna set that down there so the light turns off and it's gradually gonna fade out. Now you might hear a relay clicking, that's it operating. So. 
Once you've set your time, let's go through and what we're going to do is set the wattage for the light. So let's just check this here. It's not a thousand, it's not 800, it's not 600, not 400, not 315. No, it's none of those. Okay, no problem at all. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit the set key and I'm gonna go down here to the gear icon. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit settings. Now this has got a selected custom output wattage of power here. So this is perfect for us. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hit that, delete those, and this is only a 100 watt light. Now this is the easiest way to set any light you're working with, percentage minimum, percentage, match, percentage maximum, in case you wanted to put a bottleneck on how much power you're getting out of this light. In this case, we've got a 100 watt light and we wanna use all the power. So I'm just gonna hit save down there and go back to the screen. Here we go, so we've now set that at 100 watts and we have the settings for the on and off schedule. So again, you wanna go through there, hold the set key, cycle through. Now, sorry, I will mention that this off block up here is a manual on or off. So it's just fired up the light and off. Go through the settings. Now this is where you can manually set your dimmer intensity. Of course, when it's set to on, let's say, you want it at 65%, which in this case is 65 watts. So it gives you a pretty rough idea what you're working with there, which is nice. Once you've set that, I'll just go through the other settings. Now, it is important, of course, to have your on and off cycle. So in this case, it turns on four o'clock, 10 past four in the afternoon, and, or sorry, it turns on and then cycles off at 11. Now, it is set to a 24 hour cycle, so just keep that in mind, but it's very easy to set and adjust and just making sure that that tick is on for your, for your light cycles. Because if you don't have any of those ticks on, your light might turn on and stay on, or it might turn off and stay off. So make sure those are on. So this is group A, of course, with the little A in the corner, group B. So easy enough to set your two different light cycles between them. So a couple more important things to know is what we've got in the settings here. So just keeping in mind with this set to automatic, it means the lights are gonna cycle automatically. Good to know. In the settings here, we have wireless device. We're not gonna to stress too much about that because it's definitely more on the commercial side of the features. Let's jump back a notch. We've got the settings, which you would have seen as how we set the custom wattage for our light. Help setting, a few little basic instructions on how to use the controller. The pair setting, so this is what you're gonna use when you're connecting this to the app. So relatively straightforward and a pretty easy app to use. Output type, now, for most people, you're gonna leave this at zero to 10 volts, but there is a PWM setting for specific lights that will only work with pulse width modulation. But in most cases now, the lights are zero to 10 volts. So we're just gonna leave that as is. And another important one here is the sunrise and sunset. So for a lot of people, they want their lights to ramp up and then ramp down in the evening. And this is the easiest way to do that. So you can put a setup time, which let's say we want it over 15 minutes. So I'll just go back, so 15 minutes and we're gonna hit active. So with that saved, what that means is the sunrise and sunset is gonna initiate on this time cycle on A and it's gonna take 15 minutes to ramp up and 15 minutes to ramp down. So it really is that easy to get the features you need from this controller. Now for a lot of people, keeping it basic, like the ones we've just run through, are all you're gonna need and all you're gonna use because for a lot of people, you just need the light to cycle on and on and off with a bit of sunrise and sunset in there. So a really good controller to keep it compact. And what I have forgotten to mention here is if you just take a look, the LED we're working with here, it does have an input point, but of course it has an output. So for a lot of people, this one controller, you can daisy chain along multiple LEDs and control a complete bank of lights from a single controller, which is fantastic to hear. They do rate these for up to 50 lights per output. So between the two outputs, up to 100 lights. So a really great option for domestic growers who are looking for commercial features for their own grow space. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please get in touch with us here at Herbals. Thanks for watching.